Hey, I'm Lizette. Um, today I want to show you something I wanted to show you since Christmas. Um, it's a nice plugin for the PS1 emulator. It works at the PSP, at the PSP Go, and at the PS Vita. Um, at the PS Vita partly because we have no sound, but I will show you that one later. Um, at first, for having complete information, I'm running from 3.01, and I have the choice between King of Pool and the Megamix exploit. I'm using Megamix currently because I think it's faster and more convenient, even though it's like 10 times as big as King of Pool, but I've got 32 gigabytes, so that's fine. Um, I'm sorry for the poor um, for the poor lightning in the video. Uh, I can't get better lightning currently, um, and I'm sorry for not uploading uh, new videos in the last or five weeks. Um, my internet was a bit broken, now I've got currently Wi-Fi, but Wi-Fi is shit because LAN is way better and faster, so I'm just trying to show you something. I will also deliver um, a FIFA 2011 and FIFA 2012 video, the latest and I think last exploits for TNV. Okay, I'm running the 660 TNV 7.3 at my PS Vita, and the thing I want to show you, um, I think it's better to demonstrate it on a PSP because it has sound. Um, I wanted to show you actually the thing on all my PSPs, pretty dark. Um, I wanted to show you something at my PSP 1000, 2000, E1000 and Go, but two of them are empty and I'm not sure where the charger is, so yeah. Um, you can see this is the version 6.60 on my PSP E1000 and I'm using the most convenient uh, custom firmware available, TNV for the Vita and the LME or Mi for the PSPs. Of course, everything running at the 6.60 kernel. Let's see, I think when I change the lightning, it should get better. Okay, what's a plugin and what can it do? It's called Pop BIOS and it works for PS1 games, like this. My favorite PS1 game, Grandia. But what does it do? Um, if you start a PS1 game, we get this screen, the PlayStation screen. Everyone who owns or owned a PS1 knows something is missing. And if we now reset the game, you will see what's missing. Look at this. The old PS1 startup boot. Um, it's pretty hard to see in the video, but at the top and the bottom, there's a little black bar, and you see SCEE, -E, Sony Computer Entertainment Europe, which is um, completely spelled out on the normal um, PS1 emulator, and with pop BIOS, you can inject a PS1 BIOS, so you get the old BIOS and you get the old strings like SCEE. -E. The interesting thing about it, this is now, um, I try to get better lightning. Let's see. Um, if I reset the game, you should be able to see the black bar at the top and at the bottom. So the screen is not fully used in this BIOS version. It can be used with different BIOS and I think with the default one. Um, for this purpose I'm showing you my PSP Go. It's so big. Um, let's see, brightness. This one is of course running the 660. And it's of course running the LME custom farmer. Let's see. Okay. Also the white PSP Go is so beautiful. At the white PSP Go, I also installed Pop BIOS. System storage. 
and it also works with PSN games. That's a nice thing. Okay, now let's see. Um, at the PSP, you have to start the game and immediately reset it. Since this is a two-disc game, I'm choosing disc one. It could also be disc two. Um, and we see at this one, there is no black bar at the um, screen. This BIOS uses a full screen. And you see SCEI, Sony Computer Entertainment Inc. So the original Japanese BIOS. Um, why I'm telling you this? When you... Okay, let's boot the game. When you change the size of the display inside of the emulator. Um, other sec settings? Size of the screen. And you use zoom or full screen. Um, it depends on the BIOS you're using if full screen or zoom gives you the complete screen or if it cuts something off. Same is at the PS Vita. If you use the native PS1 emulator, I think full screen is perfectly fine and zoom cuts something off. And the native 6.60 emulator for PS1 is the other way around. We now see at the top there should be a black bar. And I think with the other BIOS and the E1000 it should be there. Now, um, back to the PS Vita. Um, at the PS Vita, we can also use Pop BIOS with the TNV, the custom firmware. And I'm showing you this right now. A PS, PSN bought PS1 game. So it could have sound if I close the emulator, but then I don't have plugins. So yeah. You see, um, reset game, there we go, the old BIOS, and it should be possible to see that there's like no black bar. I'm sorry for this horrible recording, but I can't get it better and I don't have time to record this, so I'm just doing it now in a quick, uh, in a quick way to record it. Um, you've seen the new BIOS at the Vita. There's one thing I want to show you, and I hope I will get the right version. Um, if you get the right BIOS version, I think there are like 8 or 9 different PS1 BIOS, or BIOSes, or BIOS C, or whatever the plural of BIOS is. And the interesting thing is, if you get the right BIOS, I think it's from a debug PS1 then you should be able to, you see there are a lot of these, then you should be able to get something that's cut from the PSP and the PS1 at PS Vita. Oh, oh and you see this file has to be called psx-bios.rom, even though the PSX is a PS2 and not a PS1, but whatever. Um, if you get the right BIOS, and I think it should be BIOS SC whatever, 5000 or 5500, you get something that was in the PS1 but got removed for the PSP and therefore also for the PS Vita. Uh, let's see if this is the BIOS I want. If not, it could crash the Vita, I think. Reset game. Um, the thing I want to show you is something pretty cool. Ah, there it is. Um, this is of course now the Japanese debug version, but people who might know this is that this is the CD player and the actual memory card program. I th I'm pretty sure you, there we go. You could select between these two. You see CD player, or play, pause, continue, and all the things, which is pretty interesting. Um, I'm not sure if you can actually use it, I don't think so, but it's nice to boot this on the PSP and the other one is the memory card manager. We know that the PSP has this one built in and the overlay, but it's nice to see that you can use the actual, um, come on, open it, the actual PS1 memory card manager, which damn letter 
circle x. This BIOS is pretty buggy, but it was working, or it is working, and you can actually... There we go. The memory card manager program from the PS1 on a PSP, or in this case, on a PSVR. You see you can copy all the save games, and I don't want to copy anything. You know you can use this one on the PSP and PS Vita in the overlay, but it's nice that you technically could use this one too. Copy all, delete, exit and stuff. Um, this BIOS does not let you boot your game, but it's nice to look at things and stuff. Um, I'm sorry that I had to uh, speed this up a bit. I would like to talk more and more clear about this, but I had really no time for this. and. I actually wanted to do this like five weeks ago. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little video. The plugin is called PopBIOS. It's available at zlot.net. It was created by a good friend of mine who's called Dexam or Dexam or Xemi or whatever. Um, I'm following him at Twitter. Um, I will put his Twitter in the description of the video so you can chat with him if you want to. Um, the plugin is pretty nice. It's funny. And it's a way to inject the PS1 BIOS in the PSP or PS1 emulator of the PSP, whatever. And it's, I think, the first one that's working. Um, there was a try to get the PS1 BIOS inside of the POP emulator at Farmer 3.0, whatever, for the PSP, but it failed. And Xemi was able to get this done. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to say. I'm that, and see you soon.